This video is a buster call. To find out more about how you can get me to do a personalized video on a topic of your choosing, head over to patreon.com slash grandlinereview and scroll down to the Admiral tier. But for now, enjoy the video. Hello and welcome to the Grand Line Review, your source for everything One Piece. Today we are going to do something very, very unusual for this channel and delve into the realm of bounty speculation, quite specifically what the Straw Hat bounties will total after the conclusion of the Wano arc. First and foremost, I'd like to say that I believe that Wano will be a series defining arc, one that is going to shape Luffy and the Straw Hats into figures worthy of conquering the Grand Line, and in Luffy's case specifically, becoming the Pirate King. Therefore, I believe that the conclusion of Wano will be one of the, if not the very last bounty change in the series, and a lot of my quote unquote predictions here are going to reflect that. I'm also warning you right now that some of these predictions may seem incredibly outlandish, but I just don't believe that there's room to be conservative in One Piece. This is a series where the author has managed to surprise us at almost every turn, so I see no need to play it safe when it comes to speculating over arbitrary numbers. And in fact, let's all just keep in mind that this is an exercise in pure speculation from the mind of a single person. It's also an exercise in fun and sharing ideas, so if my speculation does not agree with yours, then that's great. Please do cordially state your disagreement in the comment section, just don't be a dick. And because I find the format of most bounty speculation videos boring, almost universally starting with Chopper, then moving to Nami and so on and so forth, we are going to say screw all of that and begin by examining Zoro. As the right hand man of the future Pirate King, Zoro is due for a massive increase from his frankly far, far too low current bounty of 320 million berries. Now to be fair, Zoro hasn't exactly done a whole lot in the new world era of the story, but if an island full of samurai isn't his chance to shine, I don't know when will be. At this super early stage, a lot of people are convinced that he is going to be facing off against King, which I could certainly see happening, and taking down such a calamity could only result in a bounty over 1 billion at the very least. But we certainly are not going to stop there, because Zoro has a habit of one-upping Luffy's prior bounties, and yes, in the post-time skip era, that has kind of been thrown out of balance, but I am predicting that Zoro will follow this former trend and be crowned with a bounty higher than Luffy's current total and land and 1.7 billion berries. A lot of you are probably going to think that that's far too high and would place him around the 1.2 to 1.3 area. And to that, I say meh. That's just a bit too boring for my liking. And while Oda is a lot of things, boring certainly isn't one of them. Next up, let's talk about the most recent straw hat, Jinbei. He commences this speculation with a total of 438 million berries on his head, a nice respectable number gathered over a long career. And sadly, that's why I don't think his bounty will be changing all that much. This whale shark has been hitting the high seas for decades. His strength, intelligence, and character are known in great detail throughout the world, and he was even allied with the Yonko Big Mom, and the world government still judged his bounty to be where it is today. The only factor I feel that will affect Jinbei's bounty is the idea that he will now be officially recognized as one of the Straw Hat Pirates. So Jinbei's danger from the perspective of the world government will only be heightened by association with Luffy. And so I find myself landing on a number of around 550 million berries, just over a 100 million berry increase. Anything more is simply too high in my mind for a figure this established in the world. Plus it's highly unlikely that he'll be returning to the Straw Hats any stronger. If anything, he may be capable of far less than what he should be. So for now, this seems all right to me. Plus 550 million berries would also put him bang on Ace's former bounty, which I think would be really cool. Moving on to the ever-glorious navigator Nami. Sadly, her numbers haven't traditionally reflected Nami's true value, and so we open this bounty account with 66 million berries. I also don't feel like Wano is going to see a gigantic improvement on this number, and like the argument I made with Jinbei, Nami's danger to the world government seems to spawn almost entirely from her association with the Straw Hats. However, before we land on some stupidly boring number, let's also remember that Nami received quite a nice little power-up at the tail end of Whole Cake Island in the form of Zeus. And if Nami can pull off something particularly incredible with him, then I could see a very God Usopp style legend spreading about a goddess who can control apocalyptic weather at her whim. So you know what? As much as the boring logical side of me wants to place her anywhere between 100 to 200 million berries, I'm instead going to go all out and say that Nami will cause a huge event during Wano and will land at an exceptionally dangerous 466 million berries. Now, as for our resident Soul King, I suspect he'll be taking more of a backseat in the Wano arc after essentially being the MVP of Whole Cake Island. And no, it's not particularly fair, but I feel that what we're going to see is what I'm going to start calling an association fee attached to Brook, plonking another 100 million berries onto his current 83 million berries, simply due to the fact that he's a straw hat. So yeah, I think Brook kind of gets the short end of this bounty deal, but hey, 183 million berries, that's... 
That's still good, isn't it? All right, now Usopp is a difficult one to predict, but during the Dressrosa arc, he made a serious name for himself, albeit in a comical way. But God Usopp is now a renowned combatant of the seas, and with such a legend behind him, his presence on Wano will most certainly be noticed. And after helping to take down what could be two Yonko in a single arc, I suspect that the legend will continue with Usopp receiving a jackpot level bounty of 777 million berries, and continuing to be one of the most valuable members of the Straw Hats. As for the most super member of the crew, in all honesty, Frankie is another tricky one, because his involvement in Wano is difficult to predict. Having sat out one arc, I'm hoping that he does have a decent role in this one, although the main things to think about with Frankie is will the world government become aware of his knowledge in regards to Vegapunk's work? If they were to discover that Frankie is a pseudo-student of the world's most renowned scientist, then they should start taking him a hell of a lot more seriously. Now what does serious look like? Well once again, it's tricky because the world government is wildly inconsistent with what they deem appropriate amounts, and so I'm going to say that Frankie will end up being worth a whopping 294 million berries. That's right, we are going to add one whole God Usopp to his bounty. And now for another Straw Hat that we're going to need to pay some serious attention to. After one of the Straw Hats will have been involved in the territories of two Yonko, both of whom are known to house a road poneglyph, which Robin can conveniently read. And should they know about the poneglyph on Zo, then it would be safe to assume that the Straw Hats had now read three of the four road poneglyphs. In order to prevent Luffy from becoming the Pirate King, Robin should be targeted at all costs. And we've even had some seeding for this during the Zo arc, where Inuarashi stated that she would become incredibly sought after. So in the interest of making Robin a prime target, her bounty needs to be something huge. And you know what's huge? Well, I think about a billion berries should do it. This number has nothing to do with strength. It's purely about the sheer threat that Robin represents to the world government once she's read three of the four road poneglyphs. Because at that point, we're just one away from another pirate king. As for cotton candy lover Chopper, I feel that he does tend to be a bit of a forgotten about character in One Piece arcs. However, that could all change in the wonderful land of Wano, given how Zoan heavy the theme seems to be. But there is still a huge problem in that Wano thus far is essentially promising to boast the largest cast of characters in the series in a single arc since Marineford. So I feel like unless Chopper holds a truly pivotal role like Usopp did in Dressrosa, then he's going to be pushed into the background by default, both in terms of the story and in the eyes of the world government. Plus, I really don't see Oda giving up on the comical element of Chopper's bounty, but that doesn't necessarily mean we need to keep it low. On the contrary, I believe that using the low bounty gag a third time and tacking on another like 50 berries or so just isn't Oda's style. It's too predictable. And with that in mind, I believe that this gag is going to be taken in the exact opposite opposite direction, and by the end of Wano, Chopper will be worth somewhere in the region of a shocking 500 million and 50 berries. Anything lower than that is simply not enough for the gag to work. He'll still be referred to as the Straw Hat's pet of course, but only this time he'll be a pet monster with a huge target on his back. Now we come to the cook. Sanji's strength and general threat level has been consistently misjudged by the world government in my opinion, and his bounties tend to have a more comical aspect to them. One of these things is going to change, and I suspect that it will be the former. What this means is that I think we're going to see a very serious number assigned to him, but with an element of comedy attached to it. And on that train of thought, I've landed at the number of 997 million berries. An absolutely astounding number, but being just 3 million away from 1 billion would surely annoy Sanji to no end. And furthermore, in my particular speculation, this also puts him behind Nico Robin, which would result in a hilarious spirit-crushing panel of him comparing the two, but still give Sanji a justifiable number at the same time. Oh, and as for why he's only 3 million away from a billion, that's because it just works with his name, given that the Japanese for the number 3 is San. But now it's time to end this with the big guy himself. After spearheading a mission that will result in the potential defeat of two Yonko, I believe that Luffy will finally solidify himself as a true presence on the world stage. 1.5 billion berries simply is not enough to do that. So do we go with 2 billion? No, too boring. 3 billion. Now we're getting somewhere, but it's still not indicative of the chaos that is about to occur on Wano. So as for Monkey D. Luffy, by the end of this arc, I predict that he will attain a bounty of 3 billion 560 million berries. The five and the six are there because we need a nice Gomu reference, of course. Now I'm sure that a lot of you are going to find that number potentially far too high, given Blackbeard's current bounty, but I truly believe that Luffy is going to cause a spectacle worthy of every berry. But that pretty much does it for this odd bit of bounty speculation. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produces in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of you amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. Also check out my Teespring store if you're interested in shirts, hoodies, and other miscellaneous items, with the proceeds also going directly to support the channel. And if you'd like to join in the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with your thoughts on the Straw Hats bounties post Wano. This has been the Grand Line Review, and I'll see you next time.